everyone, and thank you for joining us for the third webinar in our spring series brought to you by the EdTech faculty at Canisius College. My name is Lauren, and I am the Associate Director of Graduate Admissions. Throughout the webinar, please feel free to ask any questions that you may have using the Q&A box on your screen. We'll also save some time at the end to answer any additional questions. Now I'll hand it over to Jason so we can get started. Hello, my name is Jason Steinegel. I'm going to turn off the camera in a minute once I introduce myself and introduce you to the actual webinar. Uh, this is a museum walk that I do with my seventh graders at Hamburg Middle School. It's a virtual tour uh, using a student generated slide and then it renders into an actual virtual reality, um, a museum walk essentially. And this can be used uh, for any historical figure, including community leaders, scientists, artists, musicians, authors. It can be used for genre types. It can be um, used for mathematicians. Um, you'll receive templates and rubrics and lesson plans to help you make this project successful for your classroom uh, and for your um, curriculum. Um, I'm a seventh grade social studies teacher at Hamburg Middle School. Um, a few years ago, I was a technology integration specialist for the entire district. And I learned so much from so many different people, uh, not only at, within our school district, but also across Western New York. I'm also an adjunct professor at Kishis College in the Graduate School of Education. And a little bit later in the presentation, I'll show you uh, some details of the program. And especially now, I hope that you consider uh, online program um, and certifications, a master's degree, as well as a teaching certification for technology integration. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the video off now and you don't need to see my face anymore. Okay. Um, I'm gonna go through this presentation as the seventh grade um, teacher that I am. And I'm having trouble, okay, the caveats first of all. This project, the Museum Walk, um, you need a Google account for each student and the teachers. I post the information on uh, my Google Drive and then that's organized into folders that I've actually posted in Google Classroom for the students to access. And I'll show you those as soon as this presentation is complete. Um, you also need access to the internet. And it's usually a three day project. I can get it done in three days. The first day is usually introduction uh, and then the research. Um, the second day is a brief tutorial of how to do a museum walk. And then the kids actually render the project. Uh, and then the third day is going to be um, presenting the actual information. It could spill into four days, depending on how large the class is. Um, and I do this in the springtime. As I teach early American history, so I go from Native American culture and geography all the way up through Reconstruction. So this abolitionist uh, and Underground Railroad uh, leader project is actually done in the springtime where the kids actually are familiar with the content. Um, the technology and my expectations. So it goes a little faster when the kids know how to log in um, and get to the resources and know how, how to present. And as always with uh, Google and technology and internet uh, resources, you got a backup plan somehow. Somewhere along the line, make sure that you have a backup plan just in case disaster happens, okay? And I wanna let you know these ideas and strategies and applications may work for me in my seventh grade social studies classroom at Hamburg Middle School. But for you and for your students, it's gonna be uh, obviously your design. Take whatever I'm offering you, the resources here, modify, adapt as, as you see fit. And please ask questions along the way. I'm here to help. Uh, I believe if you stop learning, stop teaching. So make sure that you ask questions along the way. And, and Lauren's gonna be grateful uh, for your help to um, monitor the, the chat rooms and the Q&A, okay? This presentation right here is actually designed for seventh graders. This is why I showed them a modified version of that. So I wanna show you what I'm telling seventh graders and the expectations of them and of me uh, and how I'm gonna monitor them and how I'm gonna grade them. And then later, I'm gonna close out the presentation, go to the internet and show you the live um, Hamburg Middle School drive that I have, the Google Classroom, and then show you some of the things uh, behind the scenes to make sure that uh, this project can work for you and for your students, okay? A museum walk is a virtual tour of an exhibit that describes the life of an abolitionist leader and their role in the Underground Railroad, okay? So the students are gonna be choosing an Underground Railroad leader uh, and they're gonna make a virtual reality tour that celebrates their accomplishments um, in the abolitionism movement. Okay. Uh, the gentleman in the top right corner is Patrick Worth. He's 
the uh, technology specialist at the Hamburg Middle School. He co-teaches this with me. He actually teaches uh, the process of creating a virtual tour. And I owe him a debt of gratitude because through him and his inspiration, uh, he actually has helped me um, design this project and it's, it's been wonderful working with him. And this is the website here and I'll show you this website as well. I'll pass it on to Lauren who can share it with you through, uh, through email, okay? If you don't throw anything down. Um, when they walk in my classroom every single day, they listen to the song and the song actually represents something that connects with the curriculum. Uh, and I also have the actual lyrics of the song there as well. So I give them a different variety of genre and, um, you know, different bands and different singers that they may not be accustomed to. So one of the songs in the abolitionism movement I play is Rachel Platten's song, Fight Song, because, you know, it's, it's this is their fight song. If someone you're researching now, this is what they're going to be doing for the entire life, breaking the law, helping fugitive slaves escape and risking their own lives. Um, for secession, in the antebellum period, I'll play Breakaway from Kelly Clarkson. Um, and some kids don't even know who be the Beatles are, Elvis Presley. So it's great to have them exposure to new music. And then when they come in the classroom, they actually are very, very quiet. They're listening to the song, they're listening, uh, they're reading the lyrics, and they're quiet when they come in. And they make the connection with the actual lesson, which is the objective. So for this one, um, this is a, a museum walk from the movie uh, Ferris Bueller. And he skips school. I don't tell the kids that, obviously. But uh, they're creating a museum walk. That's what they're doing right now. Um, and Patrick Worth, actually, it's why I wanted to think about this. So I found it on, on the internet. And some of the girls are going to be designing their own exhibits that celebrate the life of the ambitionist leader and people working in the underground railroad movement. This also celebrates art, too. And some of the famous paintings that are in this museum walk, I like to connect not only the music, but also the disciplines as well. So we talk about artwork celebrating culture of a people, what they value, what they preserve, um, you know, thinking about what it means to you. And you'll see the characters in the movie actually coming up very soon and pondering what it means and how they're mimic mimicking the statue poses here. The kids laugh at this. So it's beyond just abolitionist leader in the, in the underground railroad movement. Now it's about artwork and choosing the right pieces to celebrate the people you've chosen. And here's a kissing scene. And I, it's again, it's, it's a moment of maturity for some of the creators that say, yeah, they just kissed. You know, you're young ladies and gentlemen now. So there's a level of expectation that I have uh, beyond just the common core standards, you know, it's behavior, it's maturity. And you can see the character here um, focusing on the eyes of the, getting deeper and deeper into the painting. So the kids have a laugh at this. Um, Mr. Worth, you know, thinks it's, you know, very appropriate as well. So they're in a museum walk, okay, just like Ferris Bueller did with his friends in the movie, okay. Calendar, again, the, the day one is usually introduction. They choose the lead of the Underground Railroad movement. Um, they do the research on the figure. Um, I show them the, the forms they're going to need to do the research, the links online, the databases to help them with that. Um, if they can't finish it during school, then they have some homework to do. They design the museum log with Mr. Wood's help, and uh, he instructs them how to do it. It's very simple for seventh graders who are immersed in technology from their birth and the technology natives that they are to, to get this done. Uh, very quickly. And then the third day they presented the class. And I can get through maybe 20 to 25 in a day. So if you have a little bit uh, larger classrooms, you may be in the fourth day to do all this. And depending on how much homework you want to give the kids in, in independence, you may want to have a fourth day just to finish some of the work uh, that they have on the first and second day too. Okay. Um, so I'll show you in the back end when I get to the internet. My Google Drive, I actually have every classroom um, laid out as a folder. In other words, I have many different curriculums from Native American culture up through Reconstruction, and they're all lettered. If you use numbers, they are not in order if they're numerical, because 
if you go one, two, three, all the way up to 10, the 10, one, zero will jump up just below a number one. So I always recommend everyone using letters. And the letters in the folders and the curriculum titles will then transfer into Google Classrooms. So every year, I'm sorry, every uh, few weeks or so when they have a new curriculum unit, I give them one curriculum unit at a time, okay? So I give them the slavery unit and the next one will be the antebellum period. The next unit I'll give them the test antebellum period will be the civil war unit, et cetera. So at the end of the school year, they'll have all access to um, every curriculum unit. Um, the teacher notes, the tests, I give them ahead of time. They, and not the answers, but they can work on it and print it up, even with friends. Um, and then also presentations in the classroom as well. So we have the same prefect, Social Studies 7, then letter L, slavery. And the underground railroad uh, leaders and the resources online are letter F. So within the folder itself, on the Evolution of the Underground Railroad Research Project, you have them lettered on the website. So things in order, it's easy to post, easy to find for me on the front end and the back end. And then the online database is available through the school librarian, Megan Mulbert. She's been amazing trying to find, um, with every person, I'll show you the list in a moment, um, whether they're available either through books in the library, um, online databases, or even some of the links that I'm gonna share with you as well. So the kids absolutely have no excuse. They, they're able to very, very uh, focused research on Google, they're not doing any kind of Google search on that person's name. We have books, we have online databases, and we also have different links uh, to help them succeed in their project, okay? Uh, the, the other one's virtual tour uh, sites and the Museum Law Group, I'll show you in a little while, okay? So someone actually, when they come to the classroom, um, they pick a name from a hat, and the introduction is their own category that's black. Um, John Brown, uh, William Box Brown, I'm sorry, Henry Box Brown, William Wells Brown, uh, Sojourner Truth, Harry Tubman, they're all there and you see the different colors. And those are chosen specifically because they have different roles in the Underground Railroad. Okay. The green are fugitives running to freedom. Some became abolitionist leaders. So that's uh, the Browns, Frederick Douglass, Sojourner Truth, Robert Smalls, Charles Nail. The red font colors are the Canadians who actually helped fugitive slaves begin a new life in Ontario. And those are the um, Lieutenant Governor John uh, Sidcombe, uh, Mary Clay, and Reverend William King, and the Wall family as well as part of it. The blue abolitionists who want to end slavery, uh, they mostly want to help fugitive slaves escape their journeys with the Underground Railroad Station Masters. So they're the Northerners who actually risked um, their lives, like William Still, Garrett Smith, breaking the law, to help the slaves escape. David Ruggles, William Lloyd Garrison, and the Purple Group, um, the abductors who went to the South and helped fugitives escape and guiding them on their journey like Harry Tubman. This is very, very important as you'll see later because when the kids do the research, they'll have different questions that they have to answer. So for example, if you're the introduction and you're introducing the actual topic to everyone and the first one to go, you'll give them a brief background of what the Underground Railroad actually is. Um, if you're a Canadian, for example, you go ask different questions than you would for Harry Tubman. So that's going to be important later. What your role in the Underground Railroad is, is very, very important. Okay. Here are the Underground Railroad uh, research topics. So with every name, so the, the black letters is going to be the introduction. What is abolitionism? What's the Underground Railroad? Why travel to Canada? The Fugitive Slave Law. The person choosing the introduction will have those websites at their disposal to help them. And this link, um, it, these are all live. It's a PDF file posted in the Google Classroom from my Google Drive. Um, and every person has their own series of five to six links. The librarian, Megan Mulbert, has helped me find these. Um, she's actually made sure they're grade level appropriate. Um, and also on the right side, in addition to those links, we have World Book, Roll Your um, Facts site. I post these. And I'm able to post the username and password. I've voided them out for this presentation. Uh, but on the back end, is, these are paid subscription sites to the district. And they're allowed to be posted uh, with usernames and, and passwords because they're behind a password-protected site. So the students have absolutely no excuse. I couldn't find it. I did a Google search. You don't want them to go anywhere to find John Brown. You got to make sure that they're actually going to certain websites and they're focused on their learning. That's why I can do this in three to four days rather than a week or two. 
if you allow them to, um, to be independent, um, it will take a lot longer to get it done. Okay. Um, I will show you this live in a moment. This is a screenshot that I show the seventh graders. If you notice, this is a Google Form. And if you haven't done Google Forms with multiple choice testing, it is fantastic. Um, you can do different types of questions. And if you have a multiple choice question uh, test, you can actually grade these uh, student responses instantaneously uh, on the back end, which is absolutely amazing, and then send them through email. In addition to actually having multiple choice questions, you can also have the kids choose um, to collect their research notes and do short or long answer response, excuse me. And what you'll see here is basic format, your name, period number, and who you're researching. The next multiple choice question, uh, whether you're interested in the class, a fugitive, a Canadian um, station master, uh, a doctor, or Harry Tubman, that response, when it's live for the students, it will jump to a particular section of questions. So when I talked about how um, there's different roles in the gun railroad and abolitionism, here's where it comes now because the Canadian, like the Waltz family, for example, will have different questions than Harry Tubman. And when you choose the Canadian, for example, and click next, the students will jump down to the appropriate questions for the Canadian um, roles on the Underground Railroad, which are different questions than Harry Tubman. So the students will use this form to collect their research notes. And the next day I'll give it back to them so they can use it then to design their museum walk. Okay. Any questions so far? No museum? questions just yet. Okay, good. Uh, the museum walk will actually have uh, four paintings or maps or visuals that actually celebrate the life of the Underground Railroad leader. And the students will actually have to create a virtual tour, so I'll show you how to do that in a, in a moment. Um, and then once they create a virtual tour site uh, and they render the actual slide into a virtual reality, uh, I'll show you that in student examples. You, they must actually copy and paste their link into a Google Doc. So on the third day, when the students actually are ready to present, I just simply open up the Google Doc and have access to all their links very, very quickly. And again, it saves time and it's more efficient. I don't have to have the kids come in and, and log in and type up their own link, which is usually very, very long. You just simply copy and paste it to the Google Doc and I can access it there. And the museum walk rubric is the other thing that I showed them as well. I believe it's very helpful for the students to know how they'll be graded before they even begin the project. So when they present, uh, it'll be vocal quality, eye contact, avoidance distractors, movement, delivery, and content. That's gonna be uh, similar to all the presentations that we have throughout the school year, whether it's a Padlet, whether it's um, a slide presentation, um, whether it's a Vimeo movie, um, though that content is always going to be this, all the, the rubric uh, descriptions will be the same. For the museum walk now, we're going to use the graphic elements, um, the five points of interest that we expect for the kids to do, the overall layout and design, and the mechanics, okay? And we're going to have not only post images, but also uh, add text to each of those, and that'll be graded on mechanics as well, okay? Any questions so far? Not yet. Okay. So now I'm going to get rid of this here, and then we're going to go to um, promotion of the, of the actual program. So this is the actual uh, education technologies and merging media. Uh, it's, it's a graduate program, and through this program, you actually earn an online certification to help integrate technology in your district. If you proceed further, Beyond the certificate, you can actually earn a master's degree in technology uh, education, which is truly amazing and it's, it's phenomenal. Um, we designed a Google site to help you with online learning resources. So, uh, so we scroll down here, the screencasting basics and advanced work, uh, Google Hangouts and Meet, um, how to have a successful, have a successful meeting um, is, is great. Uh, Drive docs, slides, forms, um, all these are very, very helpful for you in the classroom, and it's um, self-explanatory. If you have uh, faith in yourself, 
click on some of these links to watch the videos, to practice ahead of time. One thing that I've learned through my own integration of technology is I've created my own um, test class where I have fake students and the district has allowed me to actually create George Washington and Abraham Lincoln as students so that when I practice posting a test, for example, or the museum walk, I can actually post this to George Washington and Abraham Lincoln in my test class and then log in as those two individuals and pretend to be students so that I can see their point of view. So that's one thing I would always encourage you to do. So whether you're posting out a form using it for a multiple choice test or a Padlet, always try to create um, like student perspective for yourself some way so that you can actually prevent fires and um, just make sure the kids are focused on their work. And of course, you know, with technology and with uh, the young minds that are in front of us, there always will be questions. And that's something, you know, it's, we look forward to as teachers, okay? So here's my Hamburg Middle School uh, drive. You can see the, the H here for Hamburg, it's my account there. Um, this is my classroom. And as you can see here, labeled letter A through Q, okay? Those are the, the exams, from, from, I'm sorry, from the Native American culture and the calendar of events, okay? All the way through the final exam re uh, review, uh, and resources that help them succeed in the outline of the final exam. So as we move through the school year, I allow the students to actually access essentially one folder at a time through Google Classroom. If I go down to the slavery where, you know, where the abolitionist um, project is, you can see here that I've numbered these, and each one of these numbers actually corresponds to uh, a new announcement. And within the museum walk here, are all the materials that the students will need that I post in that announcement, okay? So there's, it's, it's very simple for me then to organize material in Google Classroom I, I'm, I'm, when I use the Google Drive first and, and the previous step, okay? So here's um, my Google Classroom now. And you can see I've actually have um, period classrooms, one for each class. This is where I post all the tests and the templates for the essays and the expectations for the assignments like Museum Walk and Padlet and other ones too. Here is the beginning of the curriculum unit, letter A calendar, and then this is the uh, United States New York map. This is culture here. So everything is gonna have social studies seven as a prefix. So when the students see it alphabetically on their perspective, all of my, all of our classrooms are together and I give them one at a time. So as I go through the um, sectionalism in Asia Jackson, the day of that test, I give them the classroom code for slavery. When that unit's over, I give them the classroom code for antebellum period all the way through. Okay, so I'm going to click on slavery here. Oh, great. I want that more again. Let's try again. Technology in the backup plan. We'll get there eventually. Thanks for your patience with me. Can I ask a question while you load that up? Absolutely, yes, please, yeah. Okay, so you have individual classes for the classes you teach, then a second yeah. classroom for each unit? Yes. So this is period one right here. So all the kids in period one are in here, 20 of them. And here's why I post the tests, the essays, the assignments, the projects. In addition, I also have the um, curriculum. Okay. And this is where I actually show the kids the presentations. Here it is. Um, the test ahead of time, I give them the test ahead of time so the kids know, I don't believe in, you know, um, I got you learning. And if we're teaching, you know, prepare for the test to be successful, let's share them ahead of time uh, with the kids. And also show my videos here and all the homework assignments for the district as well, across the grade level too, okay? Um, so yeah, it, it, can it can get complicated during the seventh grade year, they get a lot of different um, classrooms for me, but at the end of the year, they always, you know, just delete them and they're good to go. 
one good thing is that at the end of the, of the school year, they have all their curriculum uh, mapped out. Okay. So if we roll down here to Museum Walk, okay, this PDF file right here is the actual long list of all the people, um, the different colors up on the, the top representing the different roles they have in the Underground Railroad. All of these links are live. So I just love Joe's example. If you click on this here, you can go right to him. The kids can actually read this and find the information that they need for the project. Okay. The next one here is uh, World Book Rollier and Fact Site. The usernames and passwords are also listed there as well. And um, this is the actual Google document. So uh, for period one, for example, I'll put the the students' names here, I just got rid of them because of you know, privacy issues. But they'll copy and paste their tour address once they create it right there, okay? So that's what the kids see. And finally, the rubric to PDF file. I always do a file save as from Microsoft Word and they get a PDF file, simply because I don't want the kids to actually um, be able to change or alter or edit the document. So PDF just locks it into what's important, okay? It's at 84 points. And we, we changed it a little bit from last year. So point of interest, we only had to have three, uh, four of them this year instead of five. So that's something we, we actually worked on together um, when we reflect it, okay? Any questions so far? Not yet. Okay. Um, I'll go back now, the, the kids will not see my Google Drive, but you can see that the actual links from Google Drive are right here. So these are posted for the kids in the Google Drive, uh, in the Google Classroom for my Google Drive. Um, notes for teachers. So when you have a museum, I'll share this with Lauren to share with all of you guys as well. The goal is to make a museum walk, we're gonna have four, um, points of interest in Museum Walk. I'm just gonna read this through to you and I'll show you basically how it works. A template for distortion. In other words, the kids are actually gonna take a Google slide. The pixel dimension for the Google slide is 4096 by 2048. And you're gonna include areas of distortion. So when you take the two dimensional Google slide and you bend it into a sphere, the top and bottom will be scrunched in. So as you look around the museum exhibit, the two-dimensional slide will become a three-dimensional sphere, which means the top and bottom of the slide will be distorted, okay? So let me go back here. This is the template right here. Again, I'll share this with you as well through Lauren. Um, it's very easy to create a Google slide with those dimensions. Okay, and then you can actually create, you know, these lines here, the horizon is here. So when Mr. Worth talks to my students about putting four interest points, the images, so when they go to the websites, they copy and paste the pictures here. And this is the median of the actual virtual reality tour, the museum walk up above here and down below here, that will be merged together and rendered um, scrunched into a sphere. My seventh graders, I mean, what, what, seventh graders, it's, they're really awesome because they will take things in the new directions. Um, Mr. Worth and I, we were saying, don't put anything above or below the, the gutter lines here. It's not going to be looking good. But they surprise me always. Some of my students actually found a picture of a chandelier. They put it up here above the actual horizontal line here. And some actually put um, a pattern of a floor, parquet floor, and put it down here. So when you can see the actual, when you look up, you'll see the, the chandelier. And then when you look down, you'll see the actual floor pattern. So they really took things into a new direction that I, I didn't think of, which is great. They put the pictures where they're supposed to be, but then they just added the new step, which is really awesome for them. Okay. Um, any questions so far? No other questions just yet. Okay. Once you do that then, um, 
we save this as an image to upload into the virtual reality tour. So you have the file and okay, you download it as okay, an image right here. It's gotta be an image. So once they get everything ready to go, the background color, we show them how to do the background colors, which they've already done before since September. Um, they post pictures in there, make sure they spaced out correctly. The chandelier up above, the floor parquet down below. That's saved now in an image and that's saved in their Google Drive. Okay. Um, when you share the Google slide with the students, make sure you share a copy for each student. Um, if you, there's three different options. You can send them a Google Doc or a slideshow and have them only view it. They can, are not allowed to edit, they can't change anything, that literally locks them out and they can just look at it, which is fine. Okay. The other thing um, that you can do is you can actually have um, one shared with an entire class period. In other words, there are some projects where I have a Google slideshow and each student has their own slide. And they're responsible for telling the story of an abolitionist leader or um, a founding father um, and, and they are actually allowed to only edit and change that one slide. But all 25 students in that classroom have access to the same presentation. They just have one slide as their work. And I promise them that if they manipulate anyone else's slide but their own, on the back end when you go to file and you go to version history, I can find out exactly who's doing what to whose slide. And you know you can promise severe and swift retribution, which is always fun for some of the graders. Um, and it also teaches them respect too. You stay in your slide, I know where you're going. Um, up in the top corner here, if everyone's on the Google Doc or the Google Slideshow, I can see where people are, they're logged in. Um, on the column over here, in the, the three pane view, I can see who's on which slide. So I can, I, and I show them that on a big screen so that, that they know that, that they'll be monitored. Um, the biggest issue with that is when students actually choose a background for a slide, um, when they, everyone's sharing it with one class period, they apply to all. I said, if that ever happens, everyone's got to get both hands up. Whoever did it will publicly shame you. And then we'll just make sure we do go back and do an undo and change just your slide. And, you know, the kids laugh when I say that. It happens every time, every year, um, that they, they, they change the background colors accidentally to all rather than just one. So it's just another idea to, to um, have the kids work on the same slide. And when you have the presentation, they're all there. You don't have to log in, you don't have to log off, you don't have to find it, the, the kid's URL, you don't have to find the slide, it's all there. Plus, when I talk to my people uh, and friends of mine and family that are in business, they don't want a long slideshow anymore to sell a product um, or to convince you of an idea. They just want one real quick slideshow. So this is actually helping them focus their language and more precise learning that way too. So just Another way of actually doing a slideshow. Um, for the museum walk and for this slide uh, that I'm gonna give them here, I'm gonna make sure that the kid, each kid gets their own copy of it. They have their own individual. So make sure that each kid gets their own copy of their own slide in the template and they can then save it to uh, a picture, okay? Any questions so far? Am I going too fast? Sound good? No questions just yet. Okay. So there's different ways to make sure that that's very important make a copy for each student so they don't work on other kids um, and have their own work to do. And this is steps to the walk. I actually copied and pasted this part of it so the kids can actually see expectations for each day. So up until, okay, the, the, uh, the goal, Google Drawing and Google Slides, that's all for the teachers. And in, in the notes that Mr. Worth and I had done uh, last couple of years and reflected upon what we did to make it seamless for the next year make it better okay not only efficient but also easier for the kids to succeed and for the steps of the walk i have this in the teacher notes as well as for the student notes as well so they know the goal for each day uh, the day one is going to be research using the form i'll show you that in a moment um, find possible images on the websites that can help you um, be one of the four expectations for the museum walk uh, and then I'm gonna return the responses to them so they can do it for homework uh, once they submit it to me, okay? 
And with Google Forms, most of you may already, if you've done it before, once you start a Google Form, whether it's a test, whether it's research notes, they must complete it and submit, I'm sorry, they must submit it to you before the end of the class period. Now, if students are not finishing the test or their research and it's a required question, then I encourage them to put something in there. Choose letter A for the test, all of them, all three or four questions you didn't have answered yet. Fool the computer into thinking that you've actually answered the questions. And then I can always send it back to them during a study hall or the next day to finish your test. So for a Google Form, it's important that you understand what they start, they must submit it. Whether they finish or not, it's up to them, but you always gotta make sure the computer knows that all answers have been recorded if it's a required question and send it back to them to finish either later in the school day or the next day, okay? Um, for the students, uh, day two, Mr. Worth goes into all this tutorial with the kids and it's, it's wonderful seeing him interact with, with those kids. Um, we're gonna create a template and give it to the kids, each of their own copy, which is this slideshow right here that has the horizon and um, the gutters, okay? They have four images, portraits, homes, uh, locations of the station on the Underground Railroad, uh, any general Im images of slavery that might relate to the Underground Railroad leader that tell the story of their heroism and their role in the Underground Railroad. Um, we've got to respect the horizon and distortion areas, and you can format options. Uh, you can do a drop shadow. Uh, that's one thing that the kids had asked is can we make this more three dimensional? So when you put uh, an image here, the image actually can then have, um, you can actually have a picture that actually has a shadow to it. It actually looks like it's three dimensional. Um, and the sliders allow you to make that either more or less um, demanding on the eye, okay? When we do a Google search for pictures, we also look for transparent uh, frames. So the one more step besides the chandelier and the floor is that students actually found really neat, ornate, uh, old fashioned looking portrait frames that are transparent. Um, and if you go to Google images here, um, you know, and if you look here and you actually go to transparent. So when the frame is wrapped around the picture, uh, it looks very, very impressive. So Mr. Worth and I designed the project uh, first for the kids. We had no idea they're gonna look for chandeliers, floors, and frames, uh, but they, they really surprised us and went beyond expectations as, as kids usually do when they're given some freedom um, within expectations, okay? Uh, backgrounds, either a picture background, you can actually do a wallpaper background or a different color background. Um, and once it's all done, you do it, save it as a JPEG image. And then from there, we go to the actual tour creator. Okay. And this is phenomenal for the kids to do. Um, once you get started, you, you import the video. Um, you actually then, you can actually add text boxes, which is a requirement. And then you actually post your um, picture to it. Okay, I'll show you some examples of students. Um, then copy and paste the actual URL that you created in your virtual tour into the correct period. Um, Google Docs so I can access it later. And um, present the information and material to the class and tell the story of the abolitionist leader. Okay. Quick question. Yeah. Is Tour Creator free through Google? Yes. Okay. Let me, let me show you the form. The form itself is very, very important for the kids to take notes. I mean, of course they can do it traditionally with handwritten um, paper and pencil, which is fine. Um, 
this is the actual form on the back and the teacher sees, okay? I'm gonna show you this in a little bit uh, from the student perspective. So your name, period number, it's a drop down box. This is the short answer text here, okay? And this is a drop down. Do you wanna go through a multiple choice or uh, a short answer a paragraph? You can choose that option as well. But for the you know the period number is always gonna be there for the kids to see it. Now, who are you researching? This is a short answer text. And the little star here means that it's absolutely required. So anything with a star has to be answered before they submit it, okay? Choose the best description. So this is where the color coordination of the names come into um, a very, very important role here. The kids have to know who they're actually researching and what their role is. Now right now, because it's not active, I can't choose an actual um, option. But if you notice here, you can actually then go to section two. So if the student actually chooses, I'm interested in the project of the class, it jumps down to section two, which is section 207 here. To make a section, you're just gonna add section down here, okay? And when this choice is offered, you can actually then go to the drop-down box and all sections will show up. So if this is the introduction, then they go to section number two right here with the introduction. The first one is the name, period number, and the person you're actually researching in the role. Section two, you can see down the bottom there, two of seven is the introduction. So if the students are actually choosing this one and they're interested in the project, they'll jump down to these questions here. Fugitive slave, okay. Running to freedom, that, that's option number uh, three, section three. You can see this on the, on the bottom. And Harry Tubman is the last one, Harry Tubman. The students will not see, I'll show you this in a little bit. If they choose one option, they will not see any other section but their own. So the introduction questions are here. If, if one student is doing the introduction, then this is the only questions they'll see. And when they have to answer these using the resources I gave them on that live PDF form or on the online databases or in the uh, library books that we have available for them too. So there's, there's no Google searches. It's completely focused on the resources of seventh graders to 12 year olds. And they can grab a book, they can go to the internet and these links and get the research done within maybe 20 minutes or so, okay? If they can't do it, they can also do it at home. The uh, online databases are accessible through the Google Classroom um, and the Google Chromebooks, which is one-to-one one -one in Hamburg now, and they can do it at home as well. Fugitive slaves. These are different questions they have to answer if their uh, individual is a fugitive slave. Canadians, same thing, different questions, okay? Some questions could be the same, some are, are different, but it's, it's interesting how the, the roles of the Indian Railroad sites are, are very, very particular, and the research questions are important too. So if I go to the preview here of what the student sees, okay, um, you notice now you can't see any other section, okay? So always look for that and, and anticipate the student perspective so that you can prevent fires. They have to answer their name, choose the period number, and who they're researching. So I'm going to do this real quickly. Okay, this will work here. And once they actually, I don't know if you let me do this, I created the form. And then here are the actual questions that only Harry Tubman's researcher has to answer. So they're focused, they know the resources, they know the questions, and they're successful. Okay? Once they submit their answers to all of this, I can always send it back to them at the end of the school day and say, if you didn't get this done, do it for homework. And I tell the parents at open house that I give them enough time in class to finish their work. If they have any uh, work to do at home, um, it's because they struggled a little bit to, to stay focused or they had questions that we could be able to answer, but the students are able to independently do this um, at home with the resources and the materials I've given them. That's what you want. If you can't do it in front of you, then they should be able to do it at home independently without um, parent help. Okay. So forms, phenomenal for multiple choice tests, 
um, and also for collection of research notes. Okay. Any questions so far? No other questions right now. Okay. Um, steps of the walk, just to let you know. I also post this for the students as well in their period classrooms, not the slavery unit, but it's very similar to what um, the teacher notes are for so that they know what's expected of them. And again, if they're doing this at home, uh, the parents know and they know, the kids know, that uh, this is expectations every day. And what I'll do is I'll even put instead of day one here, I'll put the actual date, you know, Tuesday, February, March, jeez, oh, I've been away from school for so long, I forgot the date. Tuesday, April 28th, um, what they're doing in class. And this in the second day here will be the 29th. So the parents know that it's the actual date. So instead of actually saying day one, two, and three, I'll put the date on there. So the parents have access to this as well through the students' um, Gmail um, accounts at home, okay? And the parents know this through open house and through our mind that they have homework to do and they can access their kids' work through Google Classroom. And again, we're trying to get the kids to be successful, to make good choices. And uh, if the parents and the teachers are working together and we all know ex the expectations of the kids and what when things are due and how the process of the research is working, then, then the kids have no other choice but to be successful, okay? And it's clear communication and expectations. It's been modified, adapted. It's, we've gone through this over the last few years. Um, we've changed expectations and that's part of reflection and review and, and learning to become a good teacher. So this changes every, every year as new um, ideas come about from some graders and a new way of asking. I usually ask them, were these documents successful? Did, did this really help you? And some kids actually offer some really good advice about how to change the language and be more precise. So it helps to do that, okay? Any questions so far? Not yet, and you can use that Q&A box on your screen to ask any question. Okay. And I got some examples here of some students and what they actually did. So, you know, I did. So Reese. Um, and again, I would have five um, Google Docs, one for each class period, and Reese would actually post her URL in that Google Doc. And um, when she comes up to present, she would actually then just click on that link and talk about her underground railroad leaders. If you look up, you can see she actually added um, a chandelier. Because this is actually the line where it renders. So you can see that she put one, two, three, four pictures on the horizontal line. The top and bottom were scrunched together and rendered into a sphere. In the bottom, she's got some, you know, a picture of, of floor tiling, which is really cool. That's extra. You also see that she actually added some framing here and also over here as well. So this picture actually was on the website and she added the frame as well. If you look at the, the information, okay, I can actually, she can actually uh, go to here. Isaac and, um, Maria Van Wagden, um, she brought in Sister Journey Truth and her daughter, and she can talk about how uh, this family actually helped Sister Journey Truth in her research. You know, this is now a picture of Sister Truth, and she talks about the way of life and what she did and went to New Pulse, and hopefully the kids aren't reading the actual slide or the, um, the text box. They can actually tell the story without doing, um, looking back at the screen. And the kids are in control of the pictures and they can see, you know, what's going on. And there might be the uh, pictures of Journal of Truth, four different pictures, three different pictures, but the text boxes tell a, a different chapter of the story. So in other words, it might, the kids ask, well, I got the same picture four times. So well, it should be the same picture. If you have pictures of Journal of Truth pictured four different ways, that's okay. But when you add the text boxes, each picture, each image should tell a different chapter of her story. Okay.
Any questions so far? None yet. Okay. And here's Maves. And when the list of URLs for each class period is on one Google document, the kids come up very fast, click on the link. There's no logging in or logging out. There's no typing in the URL. It's fast, it's efficient, it's quick. The kids are ready to go. Um, there's absolutely uh, opportunities for success. Okay, so here Tubman is here and she talked to the slave auction. Um, Charles now was her person and talked about how uh, he actually um, was a turning point in his life. What he, he saw the slave auction, she talked about that in a presentation. She was a well Harry Tubman as well. Okay. And Strasburg House is here. And the newspaper. So you can click on the actual pictures and get the order I, or you can actually just you go through the order. Um, she went to order a little bit. Again, I think she did, yeah, she did the chandelier and then she also did the floor panel down here, which is beyond expectation. Frames are here as well. Um, she was consistent with the framing. She has a purple background for Hamburg, purple, purple and white are school colors. So that's cool. We have a question. Yeah. Does the tour creator walk you through how to add the information boxes? Yes, it's very intuitive. And for the digital natives, it's really easy for them to do. They put a picture in there and it's very easy to actually add the text boxes there for each picture. Okay. It's very intuitive. And the last one of the Jake's here. This is Charles Nail. And this would be copied and pasted into his period Google Doc. So his name would be there. And then it was a two column document. And I would have that available so that you could click on this very, very quickly and very easily. Okay. And again, you got, you know, portraits and pictures along the horizontal line. Um, nothing up above except for bright light and a stone floor on the bottom. Um, and different pictures of people and what they're important in his life. And all this, I tell some of the graders that you choose images and maps that are going to help you tell the story. You're the teacher. It's the highest level of Bloom's taxonomy. When you're doing the research and you amass the material enough to actually be able to stand in front of your peers and share the knowledge that you have and help them understand, that's the highest level of Bloom's taxonomy. And it takes a while to get there. I mean, this happens in the springtime, not the first week of school. So they're familiar with Google and signing in and out. They know where the stuff is located in Google Classroom that I shared from my Google Drive. They know how to do research. They know expectations that they're going to be focused. And no matter what project it is, I was given the websites ahead of time. And usually I try to find websites that are two grade levels below the reading level. Uh, which is so seventh grade, for example, should be the fifth grade reading level. And if I copy and paste and print up, the, the actual site or the article. I would go to the reading teacher across the hall from me at the middle school and say, okay, what grade level is this? Um, and if it's not fifth grade, then what are the vocabulary words that are there in the article that I have to go over ahead of time to make sure the kids understand this to bring it down to fifth grade? And the reason why you want two grade levels below is research tells you that if you're trying to master new content, and you're not uh, two grade levels below where you are chronologically, then you're gonna struggle possibly with two things, finding new information about the historical figure or the project, but now you're also struggling too because the vocabulary is, a, is beyond you. So to play it safe, you wanna go two grade levels below where you are so the kids, it's easier to be successful, okay? Um, it's just another thought. So the, the books that are available for um, Megan Mulbert, our librarian, are ordered intentionally as biographies of the individuals at a fifth grade reading level or even lower. Okay. Um, the online databases, we ask the kids to go to the middle school level or even elementary level 
to help answer the questions. Let them be successful without struggling to find the information, okay? And once they know the information, the answers, it's very easy then to find pictures to tell the story, to add the text boxes, and the success of these kids is truly incredible. Um, when I worked with the special education, the blended group, uh, the special education teacher in the Hamburg schools, we actually have a, a schedule where um, the entire grade level has a period of study hall. Some go to art, um, some, some go to music lessons or the chorus, um, but they can go to different teachers and ask for help. Um, but the special education teachers were given this project ahead of time and they were already given their topics. And I gave them specific names of story, historical figures that were very easy to understand. So it was a very select group out of the 30 that I have the names to, to focus on the special education kids who require that um, extra support. Um, and those websites are, are more readable, okay? And the story is easier to understand. So then when they got to the classroom with the other kids, they were actually head of the other kids. They knew, um, the name of the person they were going to, they had at least half their form already completed. They knew where to go on the internet. And it always happens with the projects. And the special education kids really enjoy being ahead of the group for the first time. So if you can have the schedule where the project is introduced to whatever it is, whether it's museum walk, whether it's a Padlet, whether it's slides, give it to the special education kids who need more time the day before. Because when they come in the classroom, the next day, they feel more successful and more proud. Instead of asking questions, they already know where they're, and, they, and the other kids are trying to catch up with them, which is a very new concept for them. And it's been very, very successful in my classroom. So please consider that. Give the kids who need the extra time and help the day before, okay? And that, that's very successful as well. If they know how they're gonna be graded um, with the rubric given to them ahead of time, that's gonna be very, very important as well. So you know how to be successful, how we're gonna measure success, okay? Are there any questions? Um, Looks like no other questions at this time. Okay. Just to let you know, this, is, this, this project came about with a lot of help, not only from Hamburg people, Patrick Wirth and Megan Mulbert, but also uh, PBS. Uh, several years ago, I was very proud to be involved in the William Still story, which was produced um, by PBS here in Buffalo. And if you click on the word classroom here, um, I actually was able to uh, design Underground Railroad um, lesson plans for this movie to support them. So, um, and through, it says my curriculum right over here, Jason Steinegel. So this is where I actually found the names of those different uh, abolitionist leaders and station masters. And through the Wall family and the historians there, Dr. Brian Wallace is there. He actually helped me organize the categories of the different people and the roles in the Gun Railroad, which led to the form. So when you're designing a curriculum, please ask for help. Uh, we're all there to learn from each other. Patrick Worth, Megan Mulberth, the reading specialist. Um, I was fortunate to meet up with some historians. Um, reach out to people. And you learn a lot about yourself and with that support, the kids take it in different directions you never thought possible. So I'm really happy that um, I was able to share this with you today. And uh, if you have any questions about anything, obviously, please let me know. I'll be happy to share this uh, with you, Lauren, uh, you know, the, the virtual tour um, slide, as well as the steps for uh, the Underground Rail, the steps for the walk, kind of funny. So you can have that as well, okay? If there's anything else that you need from me, please let me know. Great, thank you so much, Jason. So you will receive an email with the notes as well as a link to a recording of today's webinar. So keep an eye on your email in the next few days for that, as well as a link to our final webinar. And thank you so much for attending today.